For this video, I wanted to share with you some practical ways you can prepare for your newborn. So I know when it comes to preparing for your newborn, you think you are prepared and then you see something online or you hear your friend ask about a product and then you realize, oh, I don't know about yet, that yet. I didn't hear about that. I'm not yet ready. Okay, so here are some practical ways. Number one, discuss with your partner the roles that you will be assuming and that what roles will he be assuming and what roles will you be assuming once baby comes. And so different families have different ways of doing things. They have different dynamics. Even within your unit, you have different ways of doing things. Now, when the baby comes, that will also change. So it will be good now to ask who will be doing what, um, who will do the laundry, who will do the meal preparations, the cleaning, and even the diapering. Yep, we want to discuss that too. Second is arrange for help and outsource what you can. Now, if you're the type who has a hard time delegating and you tend to micromanage, then you might have to adjust. And I'm that type who has a hard time. So what happens is I either micromanage or I either totally just let it go and just forget about it. So it would be good to know how to delegate and to outsource when you can and to know the right amount of like what you have to oversee and what you have you can just really let go of and just let it be for now okay third is to start washing your baby's clothes and linens so um the thing to note here is that you don't have to use expensive baby laundry detergent okay? so how do we find good laundry detergent so a good gauge would be look at the back of the bottle and you check and see the ingredients list. If there are a lot of words there that you cannot understand, then most likely there are a lot of chemicals that you wouldn't want for your baby. So the less foreign alien words, the better. The more words you can actually read and understand, then that's also better. Um, we want to avoid fragrances, artificial fragrances as much as possible. Um, there are some that have natural fragrances that would depend on you. Um, but for me, it's better to be on the safer side and avoid fragrances, especially artificial ones for now. And no optical brighteners like bleach or anything like that. Now, I know that we want baby to, to look like he or she is fresh and smells good. And we think the whiter, the better, the brighter, the better. Okay, but no bleach, please. That is very harsh for baby skin too. And Sometimes they have um, smells that when you inhale them, it's not good for you. Not just for baby, but for you. Number four, buy newborn essentials and diapers. So what I want to remind you of is watch out that you don't, you're not trigger happy when it comes to, to buying things. Like make sure you have a list. Okay? A list is your friend. A list is your wallet's friend. So a list is your husband's friend. Okay, so have a list of must-have essentials. And in our, in our website, we actually gave you a downloadable list there, and that's for free. We have a list of must-have essentials, and then we have a list of good-to-have things and nice-to-have things. So hopefully, you learn to prioritize. Spend your money first on the must-have essentials, and then if you have extra budget, then you can go to the good-to-have list. And if you have extra, extra budget, then you can buy the nice things to have. Okay, so those are bonuses. So learn to prioritize and learn to, yeah, to be a good steward of your finances at this point and help your husband. Number five is start packing for your labor kit and your hospital bag. So have a separate labor kit and have a separate hospital bag. So the labor kit is for your labor and hospital bag is for you, for your baby, for your partner during your hospital stay. So I suggest have a foolproof system. Think if it's my partner or somebody else who's getting something from my bag, will they be able to find it easily? Number six, prepare a list of emergency contact numbers and make it readily available and readily seen. So emergency contact numbers, I don't just mean the ones that are really for emergency purposes, but also the services that you usually need to call, like if you do if there's laundry, delivery, groceries, food. So you can also have a, a, a separate list for all those services that are easily seen. So whoever is there helping you after you give birth, they can just, oh, here's the number and then call. Number seven, cook and freeze food. It will be good to start cooking and get a head start in terms of your meal preparation. So when baby comes, you know that you, are, you have food, you'll survive. 
And if you have extra time, you can also prepare treats ahead of time, like your favorite food to eat. So when you need that energy boost or that mood boost, you have that. You can have it. Number eight is start cleaning the house. Now, please manage your expectations. And I know it's always nice to wake up to a clean house that you can just put on Instagram. However, when baby comes, you might not have that. But upon your arrival and baby's arrival from the hospital, then it will be good to still come home to a, to a clean and neat and orderly home, right? So start cleaning your house and again, get that head start. So when baby comes, you don't have much cleaning to do, just tidying up and you're good to go. And you still feel there's peace and order in your home. Number nine, make arrangements for your older kids. If you have older kids or young kids or other, if there are other siblings, then make arrangements for them. And your, if you have pets, then make arrangements for your pets. Okay, so I'm not trying to put babies and categories and, and babies and pets in the same category. Though some of you who might have a lot of other kids feel that way sometimes, but oh, I'm not making that point. So if you have older kids, make sure, or if you have pets, make sure that you know who can stay with them while you are still in the hospital and while your partner is in the hospital. So make arrangements as early as now. And finally, number 10 is to spend time with your partner and with the rest of your kids. Again, if applicable. I know that um, now you will tend to prepare like all the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have to clean the house. I have to wash baby's clothes. I have to prepare food. But please carve out time to spend with your partner and with your family because when baby comes, it will be a lot of your energy and your time will be spent on baby. So it will be good to enjoy. You have the luxury of just really enjoying at this time being with your partner. So spend that time, that unhurried, relaxed time, and learn to chill with your family. So those are 10 things that I hope can help. Those are 10 practical ways that you can prepare for your newborn's arrival, and I hope that helps you. If you have questions, then just message us, and hopefully there are questions we can answer and help you with. Enjoy preparing! <laughs>